Good morning. Well, it's the 20th of November 2021. And I'm doing a very short walk today. In fact, it's more of a stroll. I'm just going to be walking around the streets of Chesterfield Town Centre because it's a really interesting place to visit and it has some lovely old buildings too. So here we go. Chesterfield is a large market town in the borough of Chesterfield in Derbyshire, about 10 miles northeast of Matlock and 11 miles south of Sheffield, at the confluence of the River Rother and River Hipper. Excluding the city of Derby, Chesterfield is the county of Derbyshire's largest town, sitting on an old coal field, although little visual evidence of mining remains. It has a large open-air street market three days a week, which has been trading for over 800 years. Chesterfield Market provides a wide range of products at exceptional value, along with friendly market traders. The Victorian Market Hall was originally built in 1857 and in 2013 was officially named as the UK's best small indoor market by the National Association of British Market Authorities. Shopping in Chesterfield Town Centre is an enjoyable experience including Vicar Lane and the Pavement Shopping Centre for popular high street names. The Yards is full of independent shops, cafes and restaurants. From clothes to gifts and from cake making to cake eating, there are plenty of reasons to visit this special part of Chesterfield. There is also the Shambles, a collection of narrow medieval streets where further independent shops can be found. Also in the Shambles is the Royal Oak, built in the 12th century and is Chesterfield's oldest inn and one of the oldest in England. That was a nice look around the marketplace. I'm going to walk up Gloomingate now. As I walked up Gloomingate, I was able to enjoy some of Chesterfield's beautiful historic buildings. Turning left onto Saltergate, and then again at Rose Hill East, I came to the impressive building that is Chesterfield's Town Hall. It dates from 1933 to 1938, and was designed by A.J. Hope of Bradshaw, Gas and Hope of Bolton. It is a large, imposing building, built in a classical style, and quite different from other buildings in the town centre. That really is an impressive building. Beautiful. Well, when I first moved to Derbyshire at the start of 2003, within a few days of moving to Matlock, I came to Chesterfield for the first time. Now, before I came to Derbyshire, I didn't know anything about Chesterfield at all. Just, I just knew it by name, so I didn't know anything about Chesterfield. But I knew that it was probably Derbyshire's major town. 
because although Matlock is the county town of Derbyshire, it's not the biggest town. So Chesterfield I did know that was, was bigger and certainly had more facilities. So I discovered early on that Chesterfield was a great place to do all my shopping. And I still come to Chesterfield today to do most of my shopping. At the time of moving to Matlock, there wasn't a big Sainsbury's supermarket like there is now. I think that was built about five or six years after I moved there. But even then, I still found that I came to Chesterfield because there was just a lot more choice. And it was a day out as well. On a Saturday or on a Sunday, when I decided to do my shopping, I would just make the 10 mile trip to Chesterfield because it was a day out. You know, you've got Morrison's, you've got a bigger Sainsbury's here than you've got in Matlock. You've got a big Tesco. You've now got Lidl's and Aldi. Uh, so there's a lot of choice. So I enjoy coming to Chesterfield for the choice. Um, and it's just a day out, as I say. And then sometimes when I've finished, I'll drive back into the Peak District and do a quick walk. Okay, I'm now going to walk along Nysmith Gate. I headed east as I walked along Nysmith Gate, passing many more of Chesterfield's lovely historic buildings. This is where it started to get more interesting. Eventually, I arrived at Stevenson Place, along which I walked until it joined Holywell Street. Here, I could see the Winding Wheel, a Grade II listed theatre, originally built in 1923 as a cinema. Just after I started my new job in Derbyshire, I came to the Winding Wheel for an induction course. Turning right as far as Corporation Street, I reached the Stevenson Memorial Hall. Built in 1879, today it houses the Chesterfield Museum and the Pomegranate Theatre. Now here is the bit I've been particularly looking forward to today. I'm going to visit the church, or should I say, the Crooked Spire. Chesterfield's main landmark is the Church of St Mary and All Saints. 
Its most recognisable part, of course, is the crooked spire, constructed in 1362. However, the spire certainly is not crooked. It is twisted and leaning, but not crooked. Historians have suggested a number of factors for this. The use of unseasoned wood, a lack of skilled labour, and the later use of heavy lead sheeting in the 17th century. Many have tried to explain what makes the spire twist, and many have disagreed as to the real reason, but perhaps we will never know for sure. So again, I do need to be very clear here that I knew absolutely nothing about Chesterfield before I moved to Derbyshire. I'd only heard of it by name, that was all, but I knew nothing about the town whatsoever. So, when I started my new job in Derbyshire, um, I was working in a small team, about eight or nine people. Um, so I wasn't getting to know many people through work at the time because we were in a very separate office from the rest of the building. Um, but I got to know my immediate colleagues very well. And there was one chap called Keith. He was one of the older members of the group. Uh, and he lived in the Bolsover district of Derbyshire. But he knew Chesterfield very well because he was born and brought up in the area. But I remember I told him that during my first week or so of moving to Derbyshire, that I'd visited Chesterfield a couple of times. And he said to me, he said, uh, so what did you think of the Crooked Spire? And I said, Crooked Spire? <laughs> so of course, after Keith said that to me, I came back to Chesterfield and I said, ah, that Crooked Spire. <laughs> I couldn't believe that, I flipping missed it. I mean, how can you miss it? But I suppose, as I say, because I knew nothing about Chesterfield before I moved to Derbyshire, I didn't know what to look out for. So, <laughs> But since he mentioned it, I thought, yep, yeah, how the hell did I miss that? <laughs> oh, well, there you go. I decided to take a quick look inside the church in which the festival of Christmas trees is currently taking place. The trees are decorated by local people, groups and shops, from WIs to scout and guide groups, from schools to high street stores, from accountants to Chesterfield Museum and many more besides. Now in its seventh year, the festival continues to grow. In 2019, over 25,000 people visited the Crooked Spire to see the trees. Oh, it looks really lovely, all the Christmas trees. Even though it's not quite Christmas. <laughs> I've never played a church organ before. I'd still like to have a go. Well, that was lovely, having a quick look around the Crooked Spire. Well, there's just one more place I want to see now, so I'm just going to walk back through the marketplace to my final destination. Walking westwards along West Bars, I turned left to cross a footbridge over the A619 Markham Road. 
At the other side, I was in the delightful Queen's Park, opened in 1887 to commemorate Queen Victoria's Golden Jubilee. In its early days, the park was a popular venue for rallies and demonstrations. When the Derbyshire Miners Association held their rally here at the end of the 1890s, it had a festive appeal with swing boats, roundabouts and coconut shies. The park has been restored with a cafe, lake and miniature railway, as well as playing facilities for younger visitors. There is also a bandstand and a cricket ground. I also thought Queen's Park was a very pleasant spot. I mean, most parkings are really, so it's just that with this one, you're very, very close to Chesterfield Town Centre, so it's a little bit of greenery in the middle of the town. But it's nice, yeah. It's about a five minute walk to the marketplace, so a nice bit of greenery to escape to if you want to get away from the hustle and bustle of the town centre. That was a very pleasant stroll around Queen's Park. That's really the end of my walk around Chesterfield now. I'm just going to head back into the town centre first. <laughs> oh, the market traders are out now. It's got a good voice. It seems only fitting that I finish my day in Chesterfield, back at the Crooked Spire. What a fantastic building. And I still can't imagine how stupid I must have looked years ago when I said to Keith, what Crooked Spire? <laughs> uh, hey ho. But yeah, I, I do like Chesterfield. I come here at least once every week. I probably come to Chesterfield more than anywhere else, really. As I say, mainly to do my shopping, because it's a great place to shop. But the town's a nice place to walk around to, so. And the amount of people that you can see here now, it's not surprising to see why, really. Hey, Barry. You can have a 